Yes, lads and ladies, welcome back to Lily White Lane. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing okay. And today, I'm going to be bringing you a very different video, a very intriguing video, and a very interesting video as I explain how I believe Tottenham Hotspur are on the decline, as say, and we'll go in depth to many, many things that have happened over the past few years and many things that I believe will happen over the next few years. But before we get into the video, make sure if you're new here to smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button as hard as you possibly can and tap the notification bell so you don't miss an upload on the content side of things. You can expect to see all kinds of Tottenham Hotspur content, whether it be match previews, match reviews, player ratings, predicted lineups, Tottenham updates, transfer updates, debriefs and day after shows after every single Tottenham Hotspur game, the whole shebang. So make sure to smash that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. So... Today's topic of discussion is going to be a very different one, a very interesting and a very intriguing one, i say. I've been thinking about this for the past few weeks, honestly, and I'm going to go into detail about my thoughts. So let me cast your minds back to 2016, right? Tottenham Hotspur in the January transfer window, second in the league. We were second in the league. I, think, I, I believe we were top for a couple of weeks in that January transfer window, actually. So we were top of the league, second in the league, without a doubt, in the league title race. Pochettino wanted two players, right? He wanted two players. He wanted a creative midfielder and a new centre-back. A new centre-back as a backup, honestly, because I don't think that new centre-back would be getting in over um, over Jan Vertonghen and Toby Alderweireld at the time. They were like defensive rocks, absolutely fantastic. But his main priority was a creative midfielder. He did not get that creative midfielder all the way up until 2019. So do you know what happened? We did not win the Premier League title. We came third, in fact. Third in that league. Arsenal came second. They finished above us. It was disgraceful. It was disgusting, as I say. We lost 5-1 to Newcastle on the final day of the season, which was absolutely embarrassing. An embarrassing end to a fantastic season, all because the board did not back the manager, right? One year on, we're in the same position. Pochettino has done a miracle. He's took these players who simply aren't good enough. Basically, took them to um, took them to another Premier League title race. I nearly said Champions League final. We'll get onto that in a second. But took them into another Premier League title race. Once again, he wanted that creative midfielder. Once again, he wanted that new centre back. He didn't get anyone within two years' time. Two years when we were in title races, the board did not back him with one player. The only player they backed him with was Serge. Aurier. Serge Aurier, who was our third choice right back at the time, I'd say, because we had Kieran Trippier and Kyle Walker, right? And the reason Serge Aurier is in the squad right now is because the board never invested in a new right back, right? Now, let me expand on this, right? This season, we're in the league title race. We once again bottle it because the board did not back the manager with the players he wants, right? One season on from that, or two seasons, I should say, right? We somehow get to the Champions League final, an absolute miracle. We're in the Champions League final, but in the January transfer window, once again, the board does not back the manager. They buy him Lorente as a backup striker instead of a top-tier centre-half or a creative midfielder, right? And these positions sound very, very similar, very, very familiar, because we are looking at those positions right now, because the board still haven't invested in those positions, right? One year on from that, Pochettino absolutely flops, right? He flops. He takes us, I believe, to 14, 15 for one point in the season. He gets the sack. Pochettino gets the sack. Now, in my opinion, look, Pochettino getting the sack as bad as it was not as horrible as it was because, you know, he took the players who weren't good enough to a Champions League final and into two league title races, as to say, FA Cup semi-finals, you know, Champions League quarterfinals beforehand. You know, he got us into so many major competitions and he took over a side that was honestly, you know, Fighting um, fighting to get European football, let alone Champions League football. You know, fighting to get into the top 10. We had the likes of Soldado up top, Capu. You know, these types of players back in 2015 when Pochettino did first take over. And Pochettino took over. You know, it's not down to the board investing. It's due to our youth development schedule, which I still believe is something that's fantastic at the club. And Pochettino bringing through these players from the youth team, as I say. Most of the players that we did bring through were from the youth team. And what we did, right... Tottenham Hotspur's strategy was go for about five or six players, as I say, you know, go for about five or six players and hope one of them turns out an absolute miracle, right? Hope one of them turns out to be a fantastic player. Heung-Min Son, I heard about him beforehand, before Pochettino uh, signed him. No one truthfully knew who Heung-Min Son was that much. He wasn't, you know, a big face. He wasn't, you know, all over adverts and everything. Barely anyone properly knew who Hyung Min Sun was, unless you were a Leverkusen fan at the time or um or watching the Bundesliga, or you play a lot of FIFA like I do, you know. But we bring him in, right? 15 million for a player that 
not many people have heard about and he turns out to be our first team star and a fantastic player. And that's down to Pochettino's motivation, right? So that's to say 2019, Pochettino gets sacked. November 2019, Pochettino gets sacked. Jose Mourinho comes in, right? The most successful manager in the history of football. I'm going to go out there and say, right? Jose Mourinho is more successful than Sir Alex, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. He's not a better, uh, he's not a better manager because he's went to loads of big clubs and you know he didn't create an absolute dynasty and turn one of those clubs into the best team in the world. But he went to loads of fantastic clubs, as I say, and won so so much. You know Porto, you know a small Portuguese side took him to win the Champions League and become one of the best sides in the world. Then went to Real Madrid, won the Liga after the Liga after the Liga. You know kept on winning trophies. Inter Milan, everyone remembers. That Mourinho masterclass to 3 1 against Barcelona, right? So he comes to Tottenham Hotspur, an absolute fantastic manager, right? And he comes to us after a big flop at Manchester United, honestly. Now, in my opinion, he shouldn't have got the sack, you know. He took an awful Manchester United side to win the Europa League, the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup in second in the league. He shouldn't have got the sack within three seasons. I think they should have invested more in a project. But Tottenham Hotspur bring him in, right? And we all know that Jose Mourinho is not one of those managers who's going to create a project like Pochettino. He's not going to be here for about five to six years. He's going to be here for about three years, right? And within those three years with a manager such as Jose Mourinho, you must back him. You must give him the players he wants or he won't succeed, right? It's not the same Jose Mourinho as he was back in 2004. He doesn't create players as well as he used to right now. So you need to back him with the players he wants. And who has he been back with at Tottenham Hotspur, right? Last summer, people say we signed seven players last summer. People say we signed seven players. Yeah, that's all well and good, but only two of those are Jose Mourinho's signers, right? And those are Hoybia and Regulon. Guess what? Those are the two players that are paying off. The rest of them aren't Vinicius, you know. Yes, I can understand that he's done all right recently. But, you know, he wasn't Jose Mourinho's signing. Neither was Joe Hart. They were the board signings, right? Jose signed into a Hoybia and Regulon, and they were paying off. This January transfer window, right? Jose Mourinho wants a creative midfielder. He wants a centre-back. He wants two centre-backs if he can. He doesn't get absolutely anyone. He doesn't get anyone. We start losing games and all the blame is deflected onto Jose Mourinho, right? And I do put a lot of blame onto Jose Mourinho because he should be getting more out of these players, right? And it gets to this stage right now where we are in the season. Yes, we just come off a good win, but Jose's job is on the line every single game. You know, we lose a game, we lose an important game. In my opinion, he may get sacked. But as I say, you know, Jose is not one of those managers who's going to come in for a project. He's come in, it's his second season, near to the end of his second season. I believe he's only going to be here for one or two years. May not even be that if he does get the sack, as I say. And we're all wondering... Why are we in this position? Is it because of Jose Mourinho? Is it because of the board? And this is my point. Because we still have the deadwood of the Pochettino era who the board have not sold on. And the reason we're in this position is because of the board and their lack of investment into the club and their lack of business done, right? Certain players such as Eric Lamella, Ben Davies, Harry Winks, you know, Sissoko. These kind of players shouldn't be at Tottenham Hotspur, right? Even Deli Alli shouldn't be at Tottenham Hotspur, right? But the reason they're at Tottenham Hotspur is because Daniel Levy, and this goes up to Enoch, the likes of Enoch, Daniel Levy, jo uh, Joe Lewis, our owners, right? This all goes down to our owners, in my opinion. Our owners are to blame for this because of their lack of business, right? Not only are they bringing in barely any players and only investing about 50 million every two or three years, as I say, that's... That's as much as they have actually invested in this club. But not only are they doing that, they're failing to get rid of players, as I say, and setting the price tag for these players who simply haven't been good enough for the club. Way, way too high. David and Sanchez, for example, right? Jose wants to sell off David and Sanchez. They're saying 42 million for David and Sanchez. Offer 20 million for David and Sanchez and you'll get a deal, right? You'll get a deal. You offer... 42 million, you won't get a deal for Davidson Sanchez. The likes of Eric Lamelli, you know, teams are offering about 50 million. Tottenham Hotspur are asking for 30 million. You know, stop overpricing these players who aren't good enough. And this is the issue at Tottenham Hotspur. So the board is a massive issue, in my opinion, right? Then we go to the uh, recruitment staff, obviously. Our current scout, Steve Hitchin, in my opinion, has not been good enough. He flew to Milan to get the deal done and he bottled it. He bottled a deal that looks certain to happen, the Scrinyard deal, obviously, and he bottled it. He's not a good enough scout. Our recruitment staff, as I say, the scouting networks that Tottenham Hotspur have set up are not good enough, in my opinion. You know, 
We're not scouting for the best players. We're hoping we can bring in about five players, spend about, you know, 30 million on, the, on these five players and actually just hope one of them turns out to be one of the best in the world. It doesn't work like that. You want a top-tier player, you have to pay the money for him. You have to pay, you know, 100 million for a top-tier player because that's the price tags right now. For a top-tier uh, player, the likes of Haaland. Haaland's 180 right now. You know, the Haaland's, the Mbappe's, you know, the... um. Even the Usman Dembele's, you know, you look at these top tier players, Karim Benzema's, you know, all these players, and a lot of them are getting older, but the Icardi's, the Immobile's, you know, the Rashford's, you know, the Jesus's, the Sterling's, all of these top tier players, you have to pay at least 100 million, maybe 80 to 90 for some of them, as I say. And the board expect to bring in players, right? And the owners expect to pay about 30 million on players that no one's heard about and hope that one of them turns out to be a gem, right? Our lack of business makes us look a joke. Our lack of selling players, as I say, the likes of Ben Davies, Harry Winks, you know, these these types of players who are still here because of the lack of investment from the board and the lack of business still done. The recruitment staff have not been good enough, as I say, and um, this boils down to my point right now, and this boils down to where this video is heading. And this boils down to the end of this video and where I wanted to get to. I believe right now we are not going on the up, right? I believe we are going on the decline. We're sitting in an awful position in the league, as I say. Top four is not ruled out. It's going to be very, very hard, though, with the teams in there, as I say. We're sitting in this position, knocked out of the Europa League, knocked out of the FA Cup. We've got a Carabao Cup final to hang on to, which, in my opinion, is not good enough, you know? We've been knocked out of these competitions under Jose Mourinho, and he takes the blame. And yes, I can understand, I can blame Jose a lot, but you have to take a look at these players as well and see these are not Jose Mourinho's players. These are the board's players, as I say. And, you know, over the next few years, in my opinion, we need a project. We need a project, and it either goes two ways for me, right? We keep Jose for another two years. He maybe brings us an FA Cup or something like that, or maybe a Europa League. We eventually have to sack him because the fans get frustrated, and then we invest in the project. Then we invest in a five-year project. Whatever happens, we are going to have to invest in a five-year project, right? The other option, we sack Jose, we know now we invest in an Eaglesman, a Rogers, someone like that who builds a project. The likely option of what the board will do, in my opinion, is keep Jose, eventually sack Jose, don't employ Nagelsmann because he's already been uh, taken by one of the top teams. Don't employ Rodgers because he's probably still at Leicester or moved on to a Manchester United or Liverpool or something like that, as I say, or a Man City, you know. What will probably happen, in my opinion, is when Jose Mourinho gets sacked, we'll have to bring in an interim manager for the rest of whatever season he does get sacked, whether it's this season or next season. And the board won't invest in the summer. The board won't invest and they'll find themselves in a situation with players who don't deserve to be here once again. Players who shouldn't be at this club right now and players who are only here because of the board, right? Those are my thoughts and opinions. I don't see us getting Champions League football as much as I want to hope and be positive. I don't think we'll get it this season. And in next season, Jose Munoz's third season, one of his last seasons, if not his last season at Tottenham Hotspur. What have we won so far? Nothing because of the lack of investment into the manager. So in my opinion, we are going on the decline. Whatever happens, we need a rebuild. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. And as always, come on you lily whites.